everyone, welcome back to the next episode of our podcast. Today I'm here with Alexandra. Hey everyone. And we are going to be talking about a little bit what European culture is about and how a continent with so many different countries uh, can share the same values. So I would like to actually first ask you where are you from and uh, where did you volunteering? Thank you. So I am from Hungary and I did my volunteering for one year in Belgium and in the Flemish part of Belgium. I was um, actually giving workshops about the topics of interculturality and what it is to be an active citizen. What is it? What What is it to have a culture? What does it mean? So I guess that's how I relate to the topic, besides the fact that I have also experienced living long term in another country. Well, actually, the funny thing is that I've also had some or some of the activities that I've, that I've done in my volunteering in Italy were also uh, related to interculturality discussions and uh, globalization and, uh, and things like that. And yeah, I'm uh, from Portugal. And I would like to ask you, like, or was the volunteering for you the first experience you had abroad? Or did you leave somewhere else in Europe before? No. It it actually was the first time that I have lived for long term. I only visited countries for a very short period of time. I think the longest that I have been away from Hungary was probably two weeks. And then came the opportunity to spend 12 months in another country. So it was a big change indeed. Yeah, exactly. Because for me, I went to Italy and I had been there before as an exchange student. But I feel that... For a lot of volunteers, it's and especially for me, even that, even though I had lived there in Italy before, it was such a different experience, and I could relate so much more to the um, locals, and at the same time, understand a little bit better the culture. So the point I'm trying to get across is, I think the volunteering for most of volunteers is probably the way that we have to become a little bit more. Europeans somehow. What do you feel about that? Yeah, I think I completely agree with you that, um, well, for me, for sure, it was um, the first time that I considered myself European. And it wasn't even in the beginning of my of my European Solidarity Corps experience. I think it was around three months in when when the first realization came to me that okay, I actually identify myself as a European because I think there is a huge difference between knowing that I live in Europe and then identifying and saying that, okay, I'm a European citizen. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And the, the funny thing is that even though we were just living in another European country, somehow, and okay, Belgium is kind of uh, where the European capital is based. So you, you could feel a little bit more of the European feeling. But, well, it's still just one European country. So m one might argue that, uh, well, maybe you feel more the culture of that place. But uh, in my opinion, I still feel that as we are a patchwork of so many different cultures, having even just one more part of this big European uh, culture, I think it kind of helps us feel a little bit more or expand our identity be beyond our national borders because the funny thing in my opinion is that when you go abroad in Europe you wouldn't say I'm European because most likely everyone is but when you go abroad you basically stick to your own nationality uh, and that's kind of an interesting thing to say even though well we are identifying as Europeans right yes definitely um and I think it's also like it is also important to mention that um, your own nationality and the national culture that you're bringing to another country, it also gets somehow re-evaluated. Re re what a hard word. <laughs> um, because for me, when I, live in, when I was living in Hungary, I didn't really thought about me being Hungarian and what Hungarian culture really is. It was kind of natural. You were just being yourself. Yes, yes, exactly. But you know, when you go out to another country and First of all, people realize that you're not local. One of the first questions they would ask you would be, oh, and where are you from? And then you start to say it and you start to realize the differences between national cultures 
And then, yeah, it's also something very important, I think, and it's a huge part of European culture that we are this patchwork. I really love this phrase that you just used, the patchwork of uh, of cultures, because it is very true for Europe. If, if we think about how the all of Europe as a continent, it's still so, so small, and yet it has so many different countries, so many different nationalities, so many cultures, but yet somehow it is all connected. Yeah, exactly. But we've been talking about European culture and our con- the countries we've been in and our identity. But how would you uh, define European culture? I mean, I think it's a pretty vague concept and most people struggle with defining it and like what defines us as Europeans, basically. It is indeed a very hard question, I would say, and a very, very, very vague um, topic. But If I think about myself as a European, what I think about having, first of all, the historical roots that tie us together, many, many historical situations that have happened and many things that if you go from one part of Europe to the other, they would still know what you're talking about. So first of all, there is this historical root that ties us together. But then I think that the most basic thing and the most important thing, and for me, the most important part of being in a European culture or having the European culture is sharing the same basic or sharing the same core values. And by core values, I mean freedom and democracy and the liberty to to kind of be who you are. And I think that this is something that in one level or another, it shows in every European culture. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think the, the, sh- the core shared values within the EU or hopefully within other uh, European countries is something that ties us together. Um, but I actually recently I've been discussing this with uh, some people and that were asking, like, why is a country important to... Um, how does it contribute to Europe? Like, well, how does Portugal contribute to Europe or something? And like, in trying to answer these people, I was like questioning myself, like, okay, but how does Portugal contribute to the EU? And I came across like, it doesn't need to be something big. It doesn't need to be something monetarily. And I just started focusing on the details that we just have taken for granted so far. And I'm living in Sweden and they were Portuguese living in Sweden. It was like Portuguese dinner here in Sweden with six of us. And I was just telling them, look at us. Like the fact that we are all here studying abroad and we're not paying tuition fees and we can do this. It is part of how we're contributing to Europe. The free movement is one of the many things that uh, we've taken for granted. And of course, not everyone emigrate but the fact that we have the possibility to do it is such an important thing in my perspective and then i mean there are other smaller things that you can identify that are different depending on the countries but they also play a role somehow and they are transversal to all eu countries like the environmental awareness that is different and applied in different ways but I mean, I guess that also the times that we're living in now, everyone is a lot more aware. But I mean, everywhere you go in Europe, you have to pay the plastic bags and you're used to it. You know, you don't question it anymore. Yes. Oh, you're saying so many things that I can relate to. Um, One of the thoughts that I had when you were asking or you were having this discussion about what what a country can contribute to the EU um, the slogan or motto of the EU just popped into my mind, which is um, unity and diversity. And then I was thinking that several countries bring their own unique cultures into one giant um, melting pot or one giant patchwork, as we were saying. Mm -hmm. And I think that what one country can bring to another is basically a lot of knowledge, a lot of um, goods, a lot of I don't know, a lot of transactions, let's say, and then this transaction can mean people like you are now in Sweden studying. 
or it can mean um, the transaction of, I don't know, best practices in, let's say, environmental protection. And then one company can just give the best practice to another company. And then we haven't even touched the whole field of youth, where I think this transaction is like very, very significant, where NGOs and youth and young people are basically teaching each other how to be and how to how to be better and i think that's what individual countries let's say can give to the big giant pot of the of the european culture yeah i i I would like to add like regarding youth it's so interesting that 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 is what the volunteering is about it's about you no matter what uh, social background you come from or what, you, what your studies are, uh, you you are able to go to another uh, European country and do something for the community and to learn from other European volunteers, which would most likely not be possible if you were just staying in your city, in your own country. So, yeah, I think... I mean, all these things and the possibilities to do these different experiences are kind of building our culture as one with so many diverse, uh, smaller cultures, let's say. But uh, I would like to ask you about how was the process for you to like feel more European? How did it grow? I think that... Well, I kind of touched upon this already and how it started was to just go out to Belgium and having a lot of people asking me where I'm from and then starting to more identify first with my nationality, saying that I'm Hungarian, even though it has, of course, its advantages and disadvantages and very, very diverse opinions. Still, it gave me the sense of, okay, I'm a Hungarian. Okay, we have the Hungarian culture. And then... I started to compare, of course, to Belgian culture. And then I would even go deeper and say Flemish culture, because Belgium is a very, very interesting country to talk about culture, where there are several um, differently identifying um, groups, let's say, living together and living next to each other. So obviously, the first thing was starting to compare things, starting to compare small habits, holidays. the different um, order of the keyboard keys, (laughs) which is very, very unique, I think, in Belgium and also in the Netherlands. And in France as well. I mean, how is the order of the keyboard? It's Azerti. Exact. Yeah, so that's the French keyboard. Ah, Okay. Oh, I I thought it was... Okay. See? Always learning. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So going from the small things and then, of course... Um, I I was staying in a town where there are a huge um, population of um, migrants and coming from the most various cultures you can imagine. And then that means that I had a co-worker who who is from the Philippines. I was shopping at an Arabic store all the time. I was going to um, Dutch classes with Polish people. So it has a huge interculturality. Yeah. And I think that this also gave me a perspective. And then it started to slowly turn into not just seeing the difference between Hungarian and Flemish culture, but then it started to kind of be visible when I was with people who were outside of the EU or outside of Europe completely. So people from Asia, people from South America. I, I also had a coworker who was who is from Argentina. And I think that this process of me realizing that I do identify as a European was like the high point when this happened was actually at a youth exchange that I was participating during my European Solidarity Corps project. Oh, nice. Because it was the same organization where I was volunteering and they organized a, organized a youth exchange about active citizenship and European values. Actually, the whole name of the project is Active Citizens Living European Values. And there I heard some people when we were introducing ourselves. And it was many, many participants from many countries. And then around half, after half of the people had already introduced themselves, there was a couple of people who were actually working for the organization I was volunteering with. And they were saying that I'm European. And they didn't give the country where they were coming from because the question was, 
not very, which country are you from, but it was where are you from? And they said, I'm from Europe. I'm European. And that moment is still very strong in my head. And it's like, it, it's a big aha moment for me because then I was sitting there and thinking, wow, I'm also European. Why, why wouldn't I say that in the beginning? And then kind of, this was, as I said, like three months in of my project. And after that, I started to see this as a more serious thing or a more important thing in my life that I would identify as a European. And I think that many of the, Many of the values, many of the concepts that are coming from the fact that I would say I'm European and I have a European culture are also also the things that came back with me to Hungary. And then I still think of myself as a European. And I guess that is because I have the I have this double possibility that I can I most of the time I'm working with European young people. So I do get to see a lot of different cultures and a lot of different um people coming from all over Europe, but I also have the privilege to actually be able to work with people outside of Europe. And for them, Europe is still a whole thing together. They don't see it as many countries. Of course, they know. We, of course, have a much more, I don't know, diversing sense that, okay, I'm from Hungary. Okay, he's from Slovakia. But then if you if you look at Europe from a, the perspective of, let's say, a South American, who has the country in the size of Europe alone? Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't see these differences that we sometimes see, and they see it as a more unified front. And I think this perspective was the thing that really changed my perspective. No, yes, I mean, just hearing from you, like I'm European, and th that story. Yeah, it's kind of powerful to say I'm European, and I feel that most of the times when you are broad in identifying yourself it may be because you don't want to get too personal but somehow saying i'm european feels like it's more meaningful than than saying well i'm portuguese from braga or whatever you know so yeah it's, it's, thank you for sharing that and i don't have such an amazing story for you but <laughs> i i mean for me becoming more european was a little bit more like realizing that I'm around so many different people. And I, one thing that I liked about what you said was that European is not only Europe. I mean, you, you were just saying that you were going to the Arab shop. And yes, I mean, for me, it was really important just to like walk around in the street. And even though I was in Italy, you hear so many different languages, you know, and the opportunity to be around people with different backgrounds from different uh, countries speaking different languages. It's such a unique opportunity that we have in our continent. Yeah, that allows us to grow as citizens of Europe and the world, I would say. Yeah, I think in the globalized world, we may look all the same, but somehow within our borders, we make such a big di difference between each other when, I mean, we're all westernized. We all value the same things. We all have the more or less the same rights. And yeah, I think anyone who lives in Europe and those who move here, I hope they can also start to feel European because of all well, these shared values and opportunities. You know, would you like to add anything else? Yeah, I'm just thinking that maybe I would add to my first answer when you were asking what is European culture um, and what it means for me to be European. I think it also means diversity in a sense that what makes me European is that I can go, I don't know, I can sit in a car and go for a one and a half, two hour ride and then end up in a completely different language speaking area with very, very different people and yet very similar and very sharing the same history as I do and very, very similar to me in the rights and values. But still, it, it does mean that we are very, very diverse and very, very many, many cultural traits are always showing up. But somehow I do think that this diversity is what ties us together. Uh, it's funny that I think we are unaware of our, how similar we actually are. We just focus on how different we are. You put it uh, into such beautiful words. Let's uh, leave it like that. <laughs> For today, 
that's it. Um, I would like just to tell, mention to our listeners that this will be the last episode before we go on a hiatus and um, we'll come back with uh, a new structure to um, our podcast uh, next year. So you have the, the month of Christmas to spend with your family, maybe re-listen to our episodes and we'll see you sometime in 2021. Wow. We're almost there. 2020 is almost over. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Thank you for listening. And bye.